Hello and welcome to this 3.js tutorial video. In this one we are going to take a look at the WebGL stencil buffer. The example what you see here is implemented with the stencil buffer. Each face of the cube is displaying a different object inside. And every face is a stencil which is displaying one object and hiding other objects. At first, let's understand how the stencil buffer works. Imagine we have a canvas with pixels. Each pixel of each object is rendered by the WebGL renderer. And the stencil buffer holds a numeric stencil value for each pixel. Per default, the value is zero. Imagine we render an object which is invisible, that means it does not draw any color on the pixel. Instead, it writes a number into the stencil buffer for each of its own pixels. Other objects can access the stencil buffer value and based on that value either show or hide pixels. Every object which is affected by the stencil buffer performs a so-called stencil check. If the stencil check passes, the pixel is rendered. The stencil check is a customizable comparison function. For example, it can be equal to a value or not equal. In 3.js, this example would look like this. The plane in the middle writes a 1 in the stencil buffer. The blue plane renders only areas where the stencil buffer is not equal to 1. And the red plane renders only areas where the stencil buffer value equals to 1. And if I look behind the stencil plane, the whole blue plane is rendering and the whole red plane is not rendering. There are a couple of things which can affect the stencil. For one, there is the render order. If you render the stencil object after the affected objects, the stencil will have no effect. In 3GS, we can enforce a render order by setting the render order attribute of a mesh. Also, the depth check can affect the stencil. Every object pixel does a depth check in order to find out if it is behind another object. If the depth test fails, then the pixel will not be rendered. We can avoid this by setting the def write attribute of the stencil object to false. This way the stencil is not affected by the def buffer and will not affect other objects. So let us start with a fresh 3.js scene and implement the magic cube what we saw in the intro. At first I need a plane which I will use as a stencil and as a face of the cube. Because I want to create six cube faces and I want to have this code reusable, I will introduce a position and a rotation vector and apply this on this plane mesh. And now I want to place an object behind the plane. So I define the color and geometry of the object as a variable and then I create a new mesh and add it to the scene. Now you see that the object is hidden by the white plane. We can start to configure the white plane to write into the stencil buffer. And we can do that by setting the stencil write attribute of the material to true. Setting this attribute to true means that the material will do a stencil check and is able to write into the stencil buffer. Then we have to specify a stencil reference value. That value is a number and is used for the stencil check and is also used to write into the stencil buffer. Also we have to specify a stencil check function. There is a variety of functions such as equals, not equals, less or greater than, etc. 
For the stencil material, however, I want this function always to return true. So setting the attribute stencil funct to always stencil function makes the stencil check succeed no matter what value is currently written in the stencil buffer. Now we want to write the defined stencil reference number into the stencil buffer. We can do this by setting the material attribute stencil z pass to replace stencil op. This means when the stencil check passed, which is always the case, and the def check has passed, we will replace the current stencil buffer value with the defined stencil reference value. Now this stencil plane is writing its own stencil value into the stencil buffer. We must configure the object behind the plane to be affected by the stencil buffer. So let's go to the material of the object and set the attribute stencil write to true so it is affected by the stencil buffer. We set the same stencil reference value as in the stencil material. We also set the stencil function to equals stencil func. That means the stencil check passes only when the stencil buffer value equals the stencil reference value. And that means only if the stencil check passes, then the object pixel is rendered. However, you see that the object is not visible anymore. We have to change the stencil material and set the def write attribute to false, so it does not affect the def buffer anymore and does not hide any objects. Then we can see that the object behind the plane is visible and it is only visible in the areas which are covered by the stencil plane. Now I have refactored the code and made it reusable as a function. With that I can add more cube faces, each one with its own position and rotation and a different object inside. It is also important that each cube face has its own stencil reference value, so it does not show the objects of the other faces. So now you know the basic idea of the WebGL stencil buffer and how to use it in 3.js. Go ahead and check out the GitHub repository of this example project. And then see you in the next video.